This place is cold, it's wet, and it's filthy. At a glance, it's just a collection of sodden tents. But each one is a home for the thousands who live here. Look carefully and a community is revealed. Streets, shops, churches, schools, everything to make their lives feel a little more normal. The school has two classrooms, one for the teenagers and adults. It's full every day. And then George was sad. And another for the toddlers, again, always busy. It was built by Zamiko from Nigeria. He now faces the prospect of seeing it all bulldozed. If you, if you, you put down the school, you kill our children mind because the school is the key for all children in this place. Next door, we're shown through the maze by staff from Save the Children, a charity which never imagined its work would be needed in France. It gives them a sense of community. They come here, they um, learn English, they can borrow books in the library, and it's an absolutely vital part of life, life here. I think that no one's saying that the jungle should remain as it is. People shouldn't be living in these conditions, and particularly children. Um, but until you've got alternative solutions in place for children, don't demolish what's here, because you're risking pushing them into other camps and in France, which are in worse conditions or, or um, other places. Over the past month, the authorities have already cleared this section here, creating a buffer zone, a sort of no man's land between the camp on this side and the highway here where the trucks head towards the port itself. The plan now is to do the same with this whole southern half of the camp, to clear away all these tents. The question, though, is where the people go. The answer, say the authorities, is here, a collection of purpose-built shipping containers. But there aren't nearly enough of them to house the 3,000 or more who would be displaced. And there is no school, no church and no mosque here. In the shadows of the containers is the home of a family from Sudan. Father Nadir invites us inside to see his five-year-old daughter Mahali. She's ill with a fever and he is quite clearly a broken man. Wallahi. He's saying I'm so painful inside, emotional pain. I got pain inside me because of her. The family fled Sudan after their 19-year-old daughter was kidnapped by militiamen. They've been living like this for seven months. There are stories like this right across the camp. Among those here, though, are a proportion whose attempts to board the trucks to the UK are violent. The police are stretched. That's why the authorities say the camp must go. But remove the only community these people have, and it's possible the desperation and the violence will only get worse. Mark Stone, Sky News, in France.